you ready for God's word? I'd like you to sit on top of all your enemies, everybody. Praise the Lord. I welcome you to that service. This is the moment of positioning for greatness. And this day we dedicated it to the power of vision. The book of Mark chapter 5. I'm going to be running fast because of time. Mark chapter 5 from verse 25. The Bible said, And a certain woman had, which had the issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better and rather grew worse verse 27 bible said when she heard of jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment for she said if i may touch but his clothes i shall be made whole ladies and gentlemen be aware that your inward sight is what determines your outward life your inward sight your inward sight is what concludes your outward life now a lot of people are wondering why why is my outward not as i wanted it your outward is equal to your inward sight it is what you see from within you that shall be created for you what you can see from within you can receive from around Bible said that this woman, having suffered a great deal from the hand of physicians, instead of getting better, it grew worse. Bible said one day, in the midst of her pain, in the midst of her disaster, in the midst of her bad circumstances, in the midst of her confusion, Bible said one day she heard of Jesus. She was in a place that Jesus said something, and what Jesus said changed her vision. She was coming from the side of 12 years of affliction, sold all that she had. She has done everything possible to get better, but instead of getting better, she grew worse. So she was at that phase where every normal human being would have given up. Every normal human being would have said, well, I have done all I could do. Nothing is happening. I turned the towel. But Bible says, suddenly, she found herself where Jesus was. And when she had Jesus, Bible says, she said to herself, it means I still have a future. It means I can see step out of this situation. It means life can see turn around for me. What was it that happened? When Jesus spoke, a vision came to her. She saw something from what Jesus said. She was able to see a better future from what Jesus saw, said. She saw from what Jesus said, the next thing to do to be free from the calamity the devil has brought away ladies and gentlemen vision is the ability to see the tomorrow today by god's word that capacity to see a better you a better you a better you today based on what the word says how can she be talking about touching and be healed if she has not seen it when jesus spoke she saw she saw man i can rise up man this situation will not finish me man i'm not ending like this they said better me and she said to herself i now know by what i have heard that if i will touch the hem of his garment i know i shall be made whole when you see your tomorrow today you'll be assured tomorrow is coming better more beautiful than your today somebody what does that mean don't conclude with your now never you conclude with your now why are you not meant to conclude with your now every now is on the passing every future is on the coming allow what is passing to pass so that what is coming will come it didn't make sense to you allow what is passing to pass don't hang on with your today don't tie yourself with your today can i shock you it doesn't matter how today looks like if you can see a better future from within you very soon we will see you there every man will see you where you've seen yourself every man will see you where you've seen yourself the future you can't see you can't receive you can't receive you want to receive it first of all see it am i talking you want to you want to have it first of all see it child of god see a better you this is the least you can ever be the best you can be is ahead of you don't conclude with your today bible says eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither has it entered into the hearts of men what God has in stock I told us in second service God has it in stock and nobody has ever seen it the Bible said in verse 10 of that sec that first Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9 10 of it says but it is being revealed to you in your spirit so what God does is that God visits you to reveal he reveals you to you wisdom God will reveal your tomorrow to you 
That's what God does. And you know, when God reveals it, it comes like a thought. You think you are thinking, you're not the one thinking. God is supposed to be your thinking. The Bible said, it is God that walketh in you, but to will. You are just by the corner of the house, suddenly a thought comes into your heart. You start thinking. You start seeing a tomorrow bigger than today. Somebody will even tell you, shut up. How do you think you're going to be that? Looking at who you are now. Tell the person, that's your opinion. You don't know me all, though. You don't know me all. What I'm about to become will surprise you. Glory to God. I want to drop it on you. What you're about to become will surprise your neighbor. Don't conclude on your now. If that woman had concluded on herself, she would have died with infirmity. Can I shock you? Where you conclude yourself is where life stops happening for you. Where you conclude yourself is where life stops happening for you. What are you meant to do? Don't conclude yourself anywhere. God said to Abraham, where you are, from where you are, lift up your eyes, northward, southward, westward, eastward, as much as you can see, I will give to you. Now hear me, it is for man to see. It is for God to give to man the way he has seen. God cannot see for you. You have to see for yourself. And by what you've seen for yourself, God rises to make what you have seen become your experience. That's why you should be careful what you see. Don't see yourself that way because you will die. Don't see yourself a poor man. You'll be poor forever. It's for you to see. It's for God to make up on what you've seen. From where you are, lift up your eyes. Westward. North. East. As much as you can see. The question now is, as much as you can see, equal as much as God will do. Does that make sense? As much as you can see, equals as much as you will receive. So if you want to have it, start seeing it. Brother, start seeing a future. Start seeing a better you. Start seeing a nicer you. You are trekking down. See yourself in that car. Hey, you are a tenant. See yourself in that house. You are the backside. Begin to see yourself. It doesn't matter what anybody says. Don't be confused by what people say. Tell them you can say anything, but I know what I'm seeing about myself. They say you're good for nothing. Tell them, well, you that's the way you see, but that's not me. They say, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Jesus said, yes, I am from Nazareth and I'm everything good. I pray for somebody. May you be the latest fashion of prosperity in your father's house. I say, may you be the latest fashion of prosperity in your father's house. What nobody has ever done, may it be what you will do. What others are thinking about doing, may it be what you will do. They say, nobody can do it, may you be number one to do it. Under your amen and take your place. So you, you leave this house right now. You are telling yourself, well, I'm seeing myself a better, a better Victor Strong. I'm seeing myself a better Uy Large. I'm seeing myself a better Mama Lovely. I'm seeing myself a more beautiful, a more handsome Minister Pascal. I'm seeing myself in the future. The future belongs to me. I am running a tomorrow. When I get into my tomorrow, I shall be the one man to be celebrating. Abundance is ahead of me. Greatness is ahead of me. Prosperity is ahead of me. For no matter where I am now, something is turning me to a future bigger, better. Somebody shout an amen and take it by force. Don't allow circumstances beside you. Twelve years affliction. So far, twelve years in the hand of physicians. You know the physicians there are men that will have helped her, which means they got to those that will have helped her. They didn't help her, but yet she told herself, "If they fail me, I know that will help me." They didn't help her. She tried to get better. She couldn't get better. But one word from God gave her a vision, and she began telling herself, Despite what I've passed through, I know now if I will touch the hem of his coming, I now shall be made whole. I now shall be made whole. And after telling herself, she pressed on, child of God, catch a vision and allow the vision you've caught motivate your actions. Future is beautiful when what you see about the future is what instigates and influences what you do with your now that person doing things in the now because tomorrow is in need of it you know how to live if you want to be great let tomorrow sponsor what you do today when tomorrow sponsors what you do today 
what you did today will end up giving you the tomorrow that sponsored it. You didn't, you didn't catch it? You didn't catch it? Let tomorrow sponsor what you did today. Amen. Steps I take tomorrow. Steps I take tomorrow. Steps I take tomorrow. Which means I don't do things looking at today. I do things looking at where I'm going to. Every driver driving into a tomorrow is driving looking at destination. Stop doing things looking at where you are. Where you are will disappoint you. Where you are will, will, will discredit you. Where you are will cause you to give up. Child of God. That's why Sammy says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. He was in the valley, but he said, well, I wouldn't concentrate on my valley because my valley experience is but the now. But for more than my now, there is a better me coming. Therefore, I will not focus on my valley experience. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from when my help coming from. My help coming from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. What does that mean? Child of God. There is a better you coming. Focus there. What you can't see from within, you can't have around you. Do you want to have it around you? See it from within you. you know, there's a mistake we make when you're alone. You say, I'm lonely. I'm very, very lonely because I'm lonely. And I'm thinking, I don't have anybody at all to help me. Life is cheating me. There's nothing I can do anymore. I'm sure that I feel like committing suicide. Hey, close your mouth. When you're alone, you're creating your future. You're alone. Boy, my Rolls Royce is on the way. Boy, I'm winning that contract, 25 million. I'm winning that contract, 25 billion dollars. It's coming my way. Oh, Palabasaya. I'm finishing the house at, 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 at Tantuan Hills. I'm finishing the house in Asakura Drive. I'm finishing the house in, in Pretoria. I'm finishing the house. He so said, I'm buying a new one in, 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 in New York. Brother, if you can keep on dreaming, you keep on advancing. Don't allow your now to conclude you. Don't allow circumstances to conclude you. Don't allow anybody to conclude you. Conclude yourself by deciding my eyes will be focused on where I'm going. And you allow where you're going influence the things you do. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice and give the Lord a shout of amen. What will vision do? Or what is the connection between vision and greatness? Number one, vision determines possession. Vision determines possession. What you can possess is tied to what you can see. What you can't see, you can never possess. We we'll first possess things by sight, then we we'll possess them by life. Am I talking to anybody? Now, remember a few years ago, I used to, by sight, possess a plot of land within Accra. Is it true? I used to tell us, we'll buy property. We'll build it. I know some of you, looking at our size then, you used to say in your heart, how can that be? But can I tell you, what I saw two years ago is where we are now. Few weeks from now, we are packing in there. telling you that it won't take too long we'll be leaving that place for it to become a small church for us because we'll be entering into a city i know in our city we'll have a state some of you own a house there they're not saying an amen like a thunder there are some of us that will buy and there are some of us me will buy from church pay for you and dash you by give you free I told God there are people that will give house free. No, there are people that will give car free. There are about three names now on my list. I will give them car very soon. I've even told Mama One. To Mama One, that there are three on my list now. I'll dash you. Who I'm dashing you? So drink to dash another. <laughs> It was a vision last year. It was some time ago. We used to pray. We used to fast. We pray. When, when Minister P used to be the, the head of a prayer force, we used to pray. God give us a place. It was a vision then, a prayer topic then. 
now is not my prayer topic but built even though we've not finished but where we have finished is enough to is a, is a good place are you together possession is tied to visioning if you cannot vision it you can never possess it if you can never vision it child of god begin to vision it begin to see it stop seeing yourself the way you are stop seeing that small house you're living in lie on that empty bed be seeing yourself on a water bed live in that empty room that there's nothing inside be seeing yourself in a mansion be trekking under the sun be seeing yourself in an air conditioned car see yourself eating kenke but inside of you be eating the food of your choice don't eat what is available and don't concentrate, concentrate on what you eat that is available you know there's a love you live you're eating based on what is available you're eating it's not really what you want to eat but that is what your man can offer offer you so you're just feeding like that be feeding your body with what now can offer you and be feeding your spirit with what you desire to be your portion very soon am i talking to anybody i'm very soon it to be in your hands i remember when i got married for close to two years our children were not coming nights what do i do i will stand up i'll be walking around i'll be saying peniel you're, you're in this house in the name of jesus you're in this house i'll be a father to you i'll actually father you well Mm. I'll call their name because I knew the name because they were born. I'll call their names. I'll call their names. One day I went to sow a seed on their behalf. I had, I had, I had some envelopes. I went to my bishop those days. I, I gave him in my heart number one, Peniel. Number two, Avila. Number three, I had their names. I gave. So around me, men they are not seeing them, but in me they were there. And in as much as I can see them from within me it's just a matter of time you will see them around me can i shock you with this somebody cut this revelation what you see within is what men will soon see around you what you see within you is what men will soon see around you first service i told us that was how jesus lived jesus kept on saying i will die i'll resurrect he was seeing himself die within himself seeing himself resurrect within himself after a season he died and men saw him resurrecting just as he saw himself from within him is it david who killed goliath from within he said to goliath i will kill you i will cut your neck which means he saw himself killing goliath after a while his senior brothers saw david kill goliath the way he saw himself kill what you can't see about yourself nobody will see see yourself pay the husband see yourself build a house see yourself finish it see yourself be a mega pastor in city see yourself be a mega business owner see yourself owning businesses if you shout an amen now it shall be released upon you number two vision will sponsor provision if god will give it to you you must first of all be seeing it if you can't see it god won't give it to you god won't give it to you hear me everybody we see it in two levels we see god uh, we see ourselves owning it then we see god giving it ownership is first before receiving so we see ourselves owning it we see ourselves owning it then we see god re re releasing it now if you don't own it and god release it you won't know it's your own i've seen people who see their who saw their wife they never know they never knew it was their wife until somebody else came and carried the lady said ah that was actually who i was meant to marry i didn't know because you never saw you never had ownership power Child of god ownership power is number one before receiving power don't receive things you've not owned in your heart if you receive it you've not owned it another will carry it but if you own it nobody can carry it even if they carry it, they will still drop it for you carry ownership power am i talking to anybody own places own cities own cities when i came to accra those days one day i was praying, god told me he said i have a portion for you here you will own it here i never saw most of you now we have first service second service third service people are outside now we're in third service ownership so god first told me to own it before i saw it anything god will give you begins what you can own 
The challenge is, what can you own in your heart? What can you own in your heart? How much can you own in your heart? The money that has not crossed your mind will never enter your pocket. How much can you own? One day, when I was asking for something, God said to me, said, stop asking, stop asking, own it. I said, what? He said, even if you keep on asking and you lack the power to own it, you can have it. He said, own it first of all. Own levels. Own status. Own levels of glory. There are people that when you see past them, you say, this is my kind. My spiritual father shared a testimony a few days ago of a young lady who, who came to church and heard about marrying quality husband. She went on a magazine. She began looking for, it's a men's magazine. She began looking like for a man that will be like what she want to have as a husband. She kept on, she kept on, she kept on. Suddenly, she saw this young man that was sharply dressed. Sharply dressed. Hair cut, balanced. Appearance, super. Suit, quality tuxedo. Appearing nice. She tore it out. Say, this is the kind I'm looking for. Stick it in her bedroom. When she's coming out, she says, sweetheart, catch you. When she comes back, she says, how are you today? How are you today? My love, I love you. With the love of Jesus, we will meet and we will marry. Her girlfriend's walked in and said, you're fooling. Oh, what is this you're doing? He said, don't worry, I know what I'm doing. I'm chanting my cause. I'm owning what I want to receive. Child of God, if you can own it, there's no Satan that can snatch it away. And you know, one day there was a wedding. Was I in the UK or so? She had enough to go to UK for that wedding. And when she got there, she was serving. And here comes this white guy. That one on the paper was also a white guy. And who kept on watching and began to admire her. And began to say, The way this lady is highly industrious, I think that's a that, that, that is the kind of one I'm, I'm looking for. They, you know, they say that that same man that was on magazine became who she married on it on that wedding that same man wind carried her to the carried him to the wedding and as the wind carried him he has not married and wind also carried her from nigeria to wheresoever the marriage was taking place and she was busy running up and down he was busy watching her all around and she was walking about she he was busy running and suddenly he just walked up to her and said please um you you've been moving around i'm so attracted who are you who are you you are like the angel i'm looking for she turned and looked at him the picture that was in her house appeared she wanted to shout she said let me comport myself long story may short they later got married kept the picture there the first time the guy flew in and got to a house he said, ah, that's me he said well i owned you before i received you i saw you and saw how sharp you are saw your right up you are correct in your mind your brain is is light your brain is full of insight you are sharp i love people like this i loved you and with my heart i owned you before I receive you. Child of God, what you can own, you can receive. Do you want to receive it? Oh, talk to me. Do you want to receive it? Wife, do you want to receive it? Husband, do you want to receive it? Begin to own it. Am I talking? Own it. Own it. Own it. Own it. God's cry every day is, can my people own it? You see graces you like, own it. You see mantles you like, own it. You see businesses you love, love to be a kind of your business, own it. If you can own it in your heart, what does it mean to own it? Accept that you are qualified for such. Are, are we together? Accept you are qualified for such. I read a book, one book on, on the law of success. 
that book says the first law is accept you are qualified for the kind of success you believe in God for you know, some of, of us if I tell you you're going to be a multi you say are you sure at least let me start with, with thousands if they say you're going to fly a jet you say no 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 let me just start with bicycle that is my level now let me just start come on shut up your mouth if God owns the earth part of it belongs to you own it am I talking look at your neighbor Koloju Koloju tell him brother own it if you want to receive it first of all own it if you can't own it you can't receive it when you own it you are telling God I'm qualified for it this thing looks like what fits me it looks like what fits me it looks like what I would like to have around if you own it simply means that you have convinced yourself I deserve it and when you know you deserve it God will back you and release it for you somebody shout at me like a thunder somebody again shout at me like a thunder somebody again shout at me like a thunder number three vision ignites passion passion is one of the forces that ensures greatness your passion equals your portion your portion you know when you are seeing a better future you have zeal for that future you have zeal for that future you cannot be visionary and be and be and be tall you cannot be visionary and be weak hey vision will inspire passion passion it's lack of vision when you do something small you're weak <laughs> you do a little thing you're pretty <laughs> Vision is not part of it. When vision is there, you have consistency of your heart beating after it. Have you ever loved something? I love a movie. Hey, your heart is on it. You are, you, there's something you want to share about the movie. You won't sleep. You won't sleep at all. 2 a.m. you are still watching because there's something you want to see. When you desire to see something, vision will inspire passion I want to see myself owning some things some properties by next year that vision will ignite passion to work harder am I talking to anybody somebody catch a vision you will catch passion and if you catch passion you you own passions catch a vision you will end up having passion and passion will give you your portion there are portions that belongs to you but what is it that your portions are not coming is because you're not passionate enough to attract your portion let vision inspire passion and let passion sponsor the possession of your portions somebody i pray that your portions will locate you in the mighty name of jesus vision will ignite inner strength inner strength inner strength greatness answers to men with inner power they are forces that are meant to stop you but when you, what you are seeing is stronger than what is attacking you what you are seeing will ignite the energy to conquer what is attacking you can i tell you if sickness is attacking you and you have a vision to achieve something in the future that vision will kick away the sickness and give you energy to pursue have you ever seen somebody running away from death that run doesn't you, you will run and won't feel energy you, you, you won't feel weakness there's something pursuing you <laughs> the way you run you keep on running until you know you've come to safety it's when you've come to safety you find out that energy will, will disappear but in as much as you are not yet in safety energy will be supplied why because vision for life sponsors the energy for fight vision for life sponsors the energy for fight you keep on fighting because they say vision for victory catch vision for victory energy for warfare will be with you energy for fight will be with you you are desiring that God will answer you boy when you start praying you can't stop because there is an energy vision is releasing in you fighting weaknesses and making sure you attract that which your eyes is seeing the man that gives up is the man who sees nothing child of God this day I want to ask you what are you seeing what are 
rise in you. It will ignite an inner strength that will help you beat down what is coming against you and end up taking hold of all that belongs to you. There are three kinds of visions you must pursue. Number one, visions for personal greatness. We did that in first service. Number two, visions for making the house of God great. Second service. Number three, vision for financial greatness. Child of God, have a vision for your financial comfort. Money answers to what you see. Finances answers to vision. What you can't see you have financially is what you will never have. Now your financial comfort is tied to your financial vision. Money traffics towards you based on the vision you see. Money happens based on what you see. Can I shock you? There is no rich man today that never started seeing wealth before they became wealthy. It's the wealth they saw that made them work hard. It's the wealth they saw. If you're not working hard, it's because you're not seeing something. The world you see makes you walk. Now, those who are seeing no world walks no more. But those who are seeing much money walks much better. So your financial life is tied to your financial vision. And God is excited when you're comfortable financially. That's one revelation you must carry. God is not excited when financially you're not comfortable. God is excited. Why? Because when you're comfortable financially, you look like your God. God is a comfortable God. God is a God that lacks nothing. God has everything. And God has designed you to also have everything as needed to have. What you're meant to have at every given season, you are meant to have it. God is desiring and is willing to give it to you. There are what things you are meant to have at 20, God will give it to you. Things you are meant to have at 30, God will give it to you. Things you are meant to have at 40, God will give it to you. Things you are meant to have at 50, God will give it to you. I don't know who I'm talking to in this house. But how will God give it to you? You are meant to know what you need and make it a vision. If you can see it, then God will rise up to give it to you. Catch vision for your financial greatness. I must be great financially what is God's, God's take for this Third John 1 2 beloved I wish above all things that I may express by being held even as a soul prosper so this is God now call you beloved and say I wish above all things that thou prosper so God wants you to prosper Second Corinthians 8 and verse 9 for we've seen the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that even though he was rich but for our sake he became poor that we through his poverty may be rich so God made Jesus poor so that you can become rich God will make his own son poor so that wealth will answer to you. God desires you to be wealthy. God wants you to have financial comfort. Am I talking to anybody here? Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. But thou shalt remember that it is the Lord your God that gave you the power to get wealth. So because God wants you to get wealth, he gave you power. God is consistently supplying power your way so that you can be a wealth maker. You don't make wealth because you work hard. You make wealth because God supplies you the energy for wealth making. There's an energy for wealth making. Until that energy comes, you work in vain, you toil in vain, you put in your best, nothing good comes out of it. So what does God do? God supplies you the energy. Today I declare, may you begin to enjoy the energy God supplies for wealth making. So God wants you to be a wealthy man. He supplies you the energy. So get back home, tell the devil you can't stop me anymore. Because God who created me, God who is my father, he wants me to be a wealth maker. He's supplying the energy. You now lift your hand and say, Father, I receive the energy you're giving me for wealth making. I receive the wisdom you're giving me for wealth making. I receive the ideas you're giving me for wealth making. I receive them now! What vision? must you set before you to ensure financial greatness write it down quickly number one set a work vision lord i want to be wealthy lord i equally know that it, it is your will for me to be wealthy now what do you want me to do number one set a work vision set a working goal that is equal to the desired income are we together set a working goal that equals to your desired income what does that mean desire a level of income a volume of income and 
create a work that is equal to that kind of income are you are we together don't be desiring a work of two cd demanding an income of 10 cd don't be involved in a work of two cd desiring one million let the desired income equal the goal of the work walk the work that can give you that kind of income walk at a level where if god is to reward you the work put in place is equal to the reward that is one of the things you must do god cannot do it for you god cannot work for you when you are meant to work for yourself so find the work that is equal to the income you're looking for if the work you're doing now is not equal to the work to the income you're looking for begin to believe god for a better work your work must equal your income are you together somebody say i received that wisdom say it again i received that wisdom say it again i received that wisdom go on your knees dream dreams go on your knees trust god go on your knees draw out a plan strategize strategize put a work vision before you that is equal to your financial vision when you have a work vision that is equal to your financial vision definitely the work vision will attract your financial vision work is the producer of funds we work and we are paid so walk the walk that will bring you the pay of your desire so i hear say here and be committed to your work because your work will bring be the source of your income number two number two know the reason for kingdom finance why will god give me money now, if you don't know why God will give you money, even if God gives it to you, you waste it. Money is not given without a vision. Money is not given without an assignment. Money is a tool for solving problems. So, as you're asking God for money, first of all, ask yourself, if money comes to my hand, what problem will I use it to solve? What is money made for? Now, every money God gave you is not for the same thing. They say money that is for investment. They say money that is for taking care of your house. They say money, you must find out the money in my hands, what is it made for? You know, the greatest mistake to make is to have cash and don't have vision. Money without vision will soon disappear. Vision is the force that keeps money. So before money comes into your hand ask yourself lord what is this money for are we together if not you will use money wrongly and suffer if not you will spend when you're meant to be saving if not you will save when you're meant to be investing there are money for investment there are money for savings if you eat the savings you lose the future so at every given phase find out what is kingdom finances for why will God give me now? Are we together? Why will God give me? Why? Why will God give me? Now you must know that one of the major reasons why God gives you, God gives you so that through you, He will solve kingdom problems. The day you understand this, your life will change. God gives you in all that God gives you. There are some things God gives you is for savings. There are some things God gives you is for building. Every money is not for building. I've seen people who made money, the only thing they went to do was they started building and that was the end of them. They started building 15 years now, they, 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 they've not finished foundation. 15 years. It means that money wasn't made for that building, you planted it wrongly. Always find out what is it for. But in all the money God gives you, there is one thing that is consistent with it. God will give you first of all part of it is for the solving of god's problems is for the solving of god's problems now if you understand this and through you god's problems are solved no matter how much little you have in your hands it will solve all your problems plus when god is number one you can't be number zero god told me one time he said allow the money i give you to answer me first before it will answer you he said if my money in your hand answers me first it will answer you and remain but if i know that most of us your money answers you doesn't answer god first of all have it at the back of your mind this is a revelation you must carry money from god in my hands must answer to god first 
Deuteronomy 8 18. Bible says, For thou shalt remember that it is the Lord your God that gave it the power to make world, that he might establish the covenant as he has sworn unto our fathers, even as it is today. So God gives you power to make world so that through the wealth he gave you, he can establish his covenant. God's agenda in giving you is that through the, what he has given you, his covenant shall become established. If through you covenant is established, through the covenant you shall become monetized forever. Are we together? Have you wondered why people like Samson never saw poverty? Because the first time they ascended the throne, all that they had, they first went to God. God first means you can never be last. When he ascended the throne, he entered into the wealth of his father. How many of you know that everything Solomon had was what David provided? Solomon was not as rich as David. It says that he, the wealth of David was enlarged in Solomon. But everything Solomon had, David provided. When David stepped in into his father's wealth, what was the first thing he did? He took part of that wealth to establish the kingdom of God. And God told him, I will bless you beyond every man. Ladies and gentlemen, when what is in your hand establishes the kingdom, the grace of the king of that kingdom will begin to establish you. I'm believing God that this year, 2021, 2022, 2025, 2030, 2040, 2050, God will establish most of you here. If that means it's like a thunder to happen without delay. I say God will establish most of you today. How does God establish men? God establishes men when through those men he has established his kingdom. The more through you God is establishing his kingdom, through God you shall be established. Child of God, position yourself to be that man and that woman through whom God's kingdom shall be established. Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 17. The Bible said that through prosperity shall my cities be spread abroad. Through prosperity. So God will prosper you so that through you, God will spread the city abroad. Am I talking to anybody here? Eh? The more you are part of spreading the city, the more your wealth will keep on spreading. Spread the city of God and own cities for yourself. Spread the city of God. Become part of it. Tell yourself from today, I sign up. Lord, out of everything you give me, a portion goes to spreading the city abroad. Sign up from today. Lift your hand and say, I sign up from today. Say, shout it again, I sign up from today. I will establish the kingdom of God. And I'm so sure God too will establish me in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout at me like a thunder. Yeah. Number four, set what I call a financial order. Somebody write down this. It's so important. Set a financial order for yourself. God blesses order. God blesses structures. God blesses financial system. Now, there are systems you must run. Okay? Okay? The first is from every money you have, there must be percentage. One percent my tithe. One percent project. One percent prophetic offering. Seventy percent for me. Out of that 70%, 3%, I pay myself. 4% remaining, I plant back into my business or I save for my business. Somebody, I've come to find out that God blesses order. Somebody, arrange your financial life. Every money that enters your pocket, you must not spend all. There must be a spending, a spending amount. There must be a non-spendable amount. That amount, you don't spend it at all. At all. Have money you spend. Have money you don't spend. Have money you save. Have money you must invest. Have, have money for your offering. Have money you give to project. Have money for your tight. When you do this consistently, you'll be shocked. When there's a financial order, you'll be a financial blessing. When I was praying, I was asking God, how come the people will get to a level they, they stop? God told me, he said, that is the level to which they have developed capacity that will connect with me. If you get to a level whereby you are not doing what will make God to take it next level, you stop there. Hit your head on the ground, you can't cross. Do 
everything possible you can cross. Create a financial order. Every money that comes into my hand, this percentage, this percentage, this one must be saved. This is the one I spend. Can I give you this advice? Stop taking every money in your hand as the one you can spend. If you don't want poverty to kill you, don't just receive money and you have this mindset, I'm going to spend all. Any money that comes in, no matter how small it is. I remember when I started business as a young man, 22 years. The first money that entered into my hand, if I tell you, you'll laugh and fall down. But can I shock you? I took that money, I knelt and I said, God, thank you. I removed my tithe. I removed what I was using, eating. I removed something. I shared it. Small money, I shared it. And can I tell you, from then till now, I still do the same thing. God blesses a financial order. God blesses a financial system. That was what God, through Joseph, was saying to Pharaoh. Seasons of harvest is going to come. Don't spend all. Take a one-fifth of it. Save. It was shared. Where there is a financial order, there will be a financial blessing. Does that make sense? Receive grace for a financial order. Finally, this month, carry financial light. Carry a financial light. What are the lights you can carry? Psalm 24, verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. The earth is the Lord's. The fullness of the earth belongs to my Father. If it belongs to my Father, a portion of it belongs to me. That's the light. Satan, you can't stop me. You can't keep me empty. Why? Because the earth belongs to my Father. The earth and its fullness. Lord, part of that fullness, a portion of it is my own. Let it be deep-seated in you. Be conscious of it. The blessings of this earth, part of it belongs to me. The fullness of this earth, part of it belongs to me. Your mind is well fixed on it. Live like that. You always have enough coming to you. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him in Eden to dress it and to keep it. And God commanded the man saying, of every fruit, of every tree, thou merely freely eat. Now, a revelation is there. God said to man, I give you Eden. Eat. Satan, you can't stop me from eating. The assignment, the blessing of God over man is eat. From now, food will never lack in my house. I will eat because God has commanded it. Who has spoken and it came to pass when God has not supported it? Can God speak and anybody will cancel it? God's instruction is eat. Brother, you must eat. And you must eat as you desire to eat. And the king, sister, you must eat. Challenge every devil that says you won't eat. Tell them you are a liar. God's instruction says eat. God cannot say eat and I'm not eating. I must eat. I must eat. I must eat. Second to the last. Second Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. For we've known the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that even though he was rich, yet for our sake he became poor that we through his property be rich. God, thank you because you made Jesus poor so that through his poverty I shall be made rich. His poverty has worked me up to wealth. Jesus is not meant to be poor and I'm also poor. He became poor that I will become rich. Let it be a revelation. You are walking around every day declaring it. I can't be poor because he became poor. When Jesus was rich, I was poor. When he became poor, I became rich. Am I talking to anybody here? And when he became poor, he died with poverty and left it there and resurrected. If he buried poverty, it can never enter my house anymore. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. He was made poor for me to become rich. Carry that light. Carry that consciousness. You will see favor for finances for you. May God surprise you. Finally, second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse number 6. Now look at the Bible says, but this I say, he that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. He that soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Verse 7, for every man according as he has proposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, not out of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Verse 8 now says, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Why will God make grace abound towards you? Because you've been giving. Lord, I give you offering this Sunday morning. Lord, I give you my tithe. 
this day by my giving you will make grace abound towards me that me out of that grace you begin to have sufficiency lord by my giving by revelation you lay hold on your former giftings to god to decide you're receiving in the now you look at the things you've given to god and you declare the release of graces so when i give graces is released for abundance anything that leaves you is attracting grace for you am i talking he that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly he shall, that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully not as a man not not out of grudge not out of necessity but as a man desires in his heart for god loveth a cheerful giver he now said by your giving god is able to make all grace abound towards you lord by my giving all graces will abound towards me by my giving to the project i must start my house project and i'll finish it by my giving to somebody who was getting married i will marry have enough to pay dowry for my wife and me and i will enjoy our marital life which i never lack child of god anytime you give you use to challenge the releasing of the grace for your next phase are we together are we together it's as if everywhere is dry tell yourself it can't be dry my yesterday's giftings is bringing grace for abundance today you consistently live like this child of god if you're going to be away from financial struggle carry light carry light at any level you find yourself carry light you can fiddle with carry life you can mingle with carry life you can easily deploy when it's not working carry light that will make it work the earth is the loss and the fullness thereof. father thank you because the earth belongs to me belongs to you and you're my father if the earth belongs to you and my son part of it is mine i've come to take what belongs to me that was the secret of political son father give me the portion that followed for me that guy knew there's a portion that belongs to him most of us don't know but i'm here i'm telling you there's a portion that belongs to you go and make a demand of it by because you own the earth my portion the bible said if ye being men could give good gifts how much more your heavenly father giving you as you desire i pray may you carry revelation i pray that from today as you set god ahead of you as you set the financial order may financial blessing overtake you from today as you set god before you as you met god number one financially may you never be number zero in the mighty name of jesus somebody lift up your hand and begin to say father thank you thank you I will establish the kingdom of God. Somebody pray. Lord, out of what you are giving to me, Lord, I will establish. I will establish. I will establish the kingdom of God. I will establish. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, I will establish. I 